Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to AP Daily Practice Video Number Two. I'm Rob Schultz, and I teach at Bellbrook High School in Bellbrook, Ohio. And I'm Tim Gallagher, and I teach at Winter Springs High School, located just outside of beautiful Orlando, Florida. And today on this video, we're going to be doing a free response question. All right, so you know there are four types of free response questions that we have on the AP Computer Science A exam. There's the method and control structures, a class implementation. Uh, question, an array and array list question, as well as a 2D array question. Today, we're going to be looking at the method and control structures question. And this is a question from the 2022 exam, the one we just took last year. This is question number one. This is the game level question. I want to take a couple of minutes to go through some of the aspects of the question, some of the details, and then we'll look at implementing parts A and part B. So, First of all, this question involves a simulation of the play and scoring of a single player video game. And we're gonna have a few classes that we have. And it says in the game, a player attempts to complete three levels. So first of all, we have the, game, the level of the game represented by this level class. Now you'll notice this public class level that we have has a number of methods in there. The first one is a goal reached method. It returns a Boolean, it says it returns true if the player reached the goal in this level, returns false otherwise. The implementation isn't important, so it's not being shown. We also have a get points method. And this is a method that returns the number of points, it's a positive integer, recorded for this level. So those are the two important methods that we're gonna be using on our level objects that we find in this question. And there may be other instance variables and constructors that are not shown, but they're not important to this particular question. So that's the level class. The game class is represented here and we're going to write two methods of the game class but before we get to that let's look at the game class itself you know you're going to be writing two methods of this class so whenever i do a free response question i always recommend to my students the first thing you should do find the class that you're going to be writing the methods for and what instance variables do you have in this case we've got three instance variables level one level two level three Students make mistakes of not using correct instance variables a lot. So I always tell my students, circle them, put a big old star next to them, make sure that you have the correct instance variable names. In this case, level one, level two, level three. We also have some methods that we're gonna be using in this class. We have the constructor, um, that's not shown, but we know that the instance variables have all been initialized, so we're not gonna to have to worry about that when we use these instance variables. And there's a few other methods here. We have an is bonus method, that's a Boolean method, returns true if it's a bonus game and false otherwise. And then we have a play method, doesn't return anything, but it simulates the play of a game and updates all of our relevant data. So these are some other methods that we're gonna be using along with the methods of the level class in implementing the methods that we're going to be doing here in a moment. So continuing with the game class, here are the two methods that we're going to use or that we're going to implement. First of all, we have this get score method. This is what we're gonna implement in part A. It returns the score earned by the most recently played game as described. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then there's this, that's part A. And then in, uh, for the second part, we have this uh, play many times method, and that's what we're gonna implement in part B. So let's get started with part A, the get score method. So part A says, if you've downloaded the document or if you, uh, and you have the whole question printed out, we're gonna write the get score method. It returns the score for the most recently played game and each game consists of three levels. Now we know we already have those three instance variables we're gonna be using. The score for the game is computed using the following helper methods. We're gonna use the is bonus method that returns true if it's a bonus game and false otherwise. And then we're gonna use the two level methods as well. We're gonna use goal reached, which returns um, true if the goal has been reached. And we're also gonna use the get points method of the level class, and that returns the number of points recorded for that particular level. So how do we compute the score? Well, it says we're gonna use the following rules. Level one points are earned only if level one goal is reached. Level two points are only earned if you earn level, if you reach level one and level two. And level three is earned only if you reach all three levels you're going to compute the score by summing up the points earned for whatever levels you earn points for. And then if it happens to be a bonus game, the score is gonna be tripled. That's a lot to take in. So let me show you a chart with some examples of what a execution of this method might look like. So let's say in this method that we're gonna write, let's say I find out that level one is reached. Remember there's a method that tells me if it's reached or not. Let's say I get back true. And then the points for that is gonna be 200. 
let's say level two is reached and it also going to give gives me some points going to give me 100 points level three is also reached true and it's going to give me 500 points and then is bonus is returning true so how do i calculate my score well you'll notice here over on the side it's going to be the 200 plus 100 plus 500 because i reached all three levels and then times three because it is a bonus level so or a bonus game so it's going to be a total of 2400 because i reached all three levels and i get all three points plus the bonus another example might be well what if i reach levels one and two but i don't reach levels three and it's not a bonus so in this case i'm only going to get points for level one and level two 200 and 100 and my score is going to be 300 because it's not a bonus and I don't get any points for level three. Even though level three says 500, I don't get those points. Another example might be, what if I only reach level one? Level one returns true, I get 200 points. Level two is false, I'm done. Now notice it says level three true, but that doesn't matter because once I hit false for level two, my play was over. So I only get 200 points, but it's a bonus. So I'm gonna get times three so i actually get 600 points for this game and then finally the last score calculation what if i immediately get false for level one that's it i don't earn any points i can only earn level one if i if i uh reach level one and i can't earn any other points for any other levels because i haven't reached level one so what we're supposed to do now is can we write the code for this score method knowing what instance variable variables we have knowing what methods we can call on those and knowing the algorithm that we have to execute to calculate the score in this game class. So this would be a great time to pause, see if you can write the method based on everything that we just talked about and we'll come back in a few minutes and see how you did. Okay, ready? All right, here we go for part A. I'm gonna put up the entire answer. Here's what we call the canonical answer. This is not the only correct way of doing it, but it's a very common correct way. You may have some other things that are correct in here as well. Now it looks like a lot of code, but we're gonna go through here. You'll notice that um, we have nested if statements. If level one is reached, well, then I'm gonna get my level one score. And then if level two is reached, I get my level two score and then level three. And afterwards, I'm gonna calculate my bonus. So having those nested if statements, having a score, a variable that I initialize to zero and I multiply by three if it's a bonus. Notice I have to return the score at the end. This seems like a lot. But one of the approaches I want you to think about when you do a free response question is, even if I don't understand every part, can I do the parts that I do understand? And what I wanna do is look at the points that you would receive when scoring this question. And this is what we did last year when we scored the 2022 exam. You're gonna get a point as a student, if you, on part one, if you call get points, goal reached, and is bonus. Now remember, get points and goal reached are methods in the level class. So you'll notice that I call level one get points and two dot goal reached and the different goal reached methods for level one, level two, and level three. And then I also call the is bonus method, but notice the is bonus is called just by itself because that's a method in the same game class where I'm implementing this get score method. So if somewhere in your code, you call a level with a get points, a level and a get reached, a goal reached method, and then call the is bonus as well, you're gonna earn a point for point one. Point two says, well, do you determine if points are earned based on the goal reached return values? This is my if statements. Do you check your if statements and in your if statements, do you check the value returned from goal reached and if based on that, do you then determine if you're gonna earn points? The point number three says, do you guard uh, the update of a score for the bonus based on the return value that you get from the is bonus method? And then finally, if you do all those and get the score initialized, which score is equal to zero, and then the entire algorithm, did you get everything right? Were they nested ifs instead of separate ifs? And did you only call the bonus after that and multiply your total score by three and get the entire algorithm right, then you can earn 0.4 as well. So notice that these points are all separate. So even if you don't get every aspect right, you can still earn a lot of points based on achieving each of these uh, rubric points that we have in order to get towards the, uh, the total score for your free response question.
Hope you did well. Rob, I'm going to send it over to you for part B. Okay, great. Hey, thanks, Tim. So let's take a look at part B. Part B says that we're going to write the play many times method, which simulates the play of numb games. So remember when Tim went through the, uh, the class definition that we were given, play many times has numb games as a parameter. So it has that parameter that's going to represent the number of games that we're going to play. And then we're going to return the highest game score we earned. For example, um, if we have play many times with the parameter value four, with the argument four, it means we're going to play the game four times. And let's say we earn the scores of 75, 50, 90, and 20. Okay, then this method should return 90 because 90 is the highest game score that we earned. All right. Um, it goes on to say that play of game is simulated by calling uh, the helper method play. And it says, note that if play is called only one time, followed by multiple consecutive calls to get score, each call to get score will return the score earned in that single simulated play of game. So that's important to kind of make note of as you're thinking about how you're going to kind of put this code together for part B. Okay. Um, so let's go through and let's actually take a look. Um, this would be a good point to pause again. If you want to take a shot at writing the code for part B for the play many times method. Um, so go ahead and pause. Take a couple seconds and see what you can kind of flesh out as far as the code. And when you're ready to go through it, press play to come back. All right, welcome back. How do we do? Do you feel confident about it? I hope so. Let's check it out. So here's some actual code. Now, again, this is the conical solution. And as Tim pointed out, this is not the only solution. This is just um, a solution that was determined to be kind of a common solution that meets all of the marks we're looking for. All right. So as we look through this one, there were five points on the rubric for this specific part of the question. All right, so let's run through real quick. We know that we're gonna, when we call play many times, we're gonna pass in a value to num, and that represents the number of simulated games we're gonna play. So the very first point is, do we loop num times? And in this case, yes, we've got our for loop that's gonna loop from i equal to zero up to, but not including i equal num. So as long as i is less than num, we're gonna cycle through. Okay, the second question, or the second point, I should say, um, do we call the play and get score methods? Well, we do. We have a call to play, and then right below that, we have a call to get score. Now, I want to point out that it doesn't necessarily say that we have to use those values appropriately as long as we're calling them appropriately to get the point, okay? Um, so in this, in this case, we call play inside our loop, and then we call get score. We figure out what our highest score is. Um, and again, get score is the method that was um, that was created in part A. And I should also point out up here at the top, it says in our description of this problem that you must call play and get score appropriately um, in order to receive full credit. And it said you can assume that get score works as intended, regardless of what you wrote in part A. So it's important to realize that because we wrote it in part A, even if we made a couple mistakes here and there, we can assume it works correctly, but we don't want to go back and rewrite get score into this method. We want to call it the way it's the way it's intended. Okay, the third point, do we compare a score to an identified max or to another score? Well, right here's our if statement. We're comparing score to this value that we've assigned as max. All right, so that's going to represent our maximum score, and we're going to use that within our algorithm to determine what the maximum score is. Okay. Point four is our algorithm point. This is the one where do we um, we make sure our algorithm is correct and all of the code is correct to actually identify the true maximum score. So as we look through, um, we're initializing max equal to zero. Um, we call the play method to simulate playing all of the levels and we call get score to calculate our scores. Um, we store that score, we check it against our max score. And if score is greater than max, if it's greater than whatever our previously found max score was, it becomes the new max score. So in this case, our algorithm is correct. And then our last point, and I'm going to be honest, this is the one that I kind of cringe because I know there are going to be students that are so excited about making sure they get the algorithm right and so focused on the algorithm, they forget to return the answer. So the last point is, do we return our identified maximum score? And that's important because it's easy to get focused on the algorithm and then forget to return it back. Okay, so yes, we have to make sure we return max. In this case, we're returning max, which is what we've identified as our maximum score. Um, and that's the, the end of our solution. This has been video number two, which focused on free response question number one, um, the methods and control structures question. Some takeaways from this one. 
first and foremost, as, as Tim pointed out before, make sure you do what you can do. This, these free response questions are not all or nothing scores. Um, if you know how to do certain parts, do what you know how to do and get the points that you can. And don't worry about the things that you're unsure of. The other takeaways, make sure you read carefully, make sure you underline the important points, star your instance variables so that you get all those instance variables that you need. And the main thing is just take your time, read questions carefully, and make sure you don't miss any of the details. I hope this video has been beneficial, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.